Hi, my name is Dave Abel and I'm a Senior Solution Consultant at Sage Intact specializing in NFP, governmental, and NGO requirements. Sage Intact's Grant Tracking and Billing Module helps organizations ensure compliance with grant requirements. By maintaining efficient and accurate grant tracking, reporting, and reimbursement processes, mission success becomes much more attainable. Today we're going to take a look at Sage Intact's feature set surrounding grant tracking and billing and differentiate between the two options available implementing just the grant dimension for tracking and reporting purposes or the full grant tracking and billing module. The latter will provide extended functionality in the areas of automated reimbursement billing. Organizational requirements will drive if the system is set up to track grants with a dimension alone or extended to include reimbursement invoice generation by leveraging the grant billing capabilities included in the grant module. As well, if grant tracking is started using only a dimension, Scaling into using the extended functionality by subscribing to the full application is always a future option as the needs for grant tracking grow. Sage Intact can be configured to simply track grant activity using a dimension by itself. While this method satisfies the basic grant tracking requirements and is easy to use, the process of gathering your grants and deciding which are billable is more manual and is reliant on externally enforced business process controls. Furthermore, it provides a less detailed trail for historical purposes. With this method of tracking, you simply add the grant dimension at the line level of transactions that relate to your grant. Then, when you want reimbursement, you drive the process through reporting, which will provide both the backup detail as well as the amounts needed for a reimbursement request. Conversely, you can automate the grant tracking and reimbursement request process through the full module. This path offers more precision and system control and more importantly, allows you to identify which expenses are eligible for settlement, therefore maximizing your reimbursement by dynamically gathering all amounts not previously billed. By establishing the grant dimension as billable through the selection of a billing type and using it on transactions, the generate invoice process will automate reimbursement billing to each grantor by dynamically gathering transactions that have been marked as billable but not yet invoiced. You can flag the following transactions as billable. AP bills, purchase orders, general ledger journal entries, employee expenses, and timesheet entries. Let's take a closer look at how all of this works inside of Sage Intact. Okay, so here we are inside of Sage Intact, and we're going to take a look at the differences between just using the grant dimension uh, or uh, the full grant module. So where we are right now is on a dashboard that I'm calling my Grant Manager dashboard, and it's showing us a variety of information uh, against a grant or several grants. Uh, we have several components here with different reports and performance cards, and as you can see here, we're showing our grant activity as rows on this particular report, and the way we were able to accommodate this was to code the transactions to an actual grant dimension. So for instance, for the Community Development Block Grant, you see that we have some budget activity, some revenue that's booked, a remaining draw, and some expenditures. The expenditures were entered into the system through bills or journal entries by coding those transactions to the grant dimension. So let's go ahead and drill into this amount here, and it'll bring up the general ledger report. And this is what's going to drive your billing now. Okay, Like I mentioned earlier, it's a more of a manual process you're going to be able to, to get to your activity through running a report and then placing it onto an invoice to send to your grantor. Okay, if we scroll down here, you'll see that we have an office supply section and a variety of different bills that were coded to the community block grant uh, dimension. Let's drill into one of them here, this $125, and this will bring up the bill. And then on the bill line, the entry line, you'll see that we coded it to the grant dimension. So this would be the same for any other type of transaction in the system, whether it was a time entry, an employee expense entry, maybe a purchase order, you'll be able to code the transactions to a dimension that's uh, representing the grant, and then you'll be able to report against it to generate your billings, your reimbursements, uh, back to the grantor. Okay, so a different approach might be following that same process where you're going to put bills in and using the grant dimension, but now we're going to automate the creation of the invoice back to the grantor. So let's take a look at a couple more transactions that I have in the system here. First of all, I have an AP bill that I've set up to Sam's Club. And then down here on the line, you'll see that I coded it to the Grant Community Development Block Grant. And it's for $1,500.50. Okay. And also on this line, if I show the details, 
you'll see that it was a billable transaction. Okay. Also, I have some time that I've put into the system here in, in a timesheet. And on the timesheet, I have coded it to, again, the block grant and also made this time billable. So through configuration, you'll be able to set up uh, that time will be coded against maybe a particular uh, billing rate, and then it'll accumulate all that time, multiply it against the billing rate, and come up with a billable dollar amount back to your grantor. The way that you're able to accommodate this is over here under Generate Invoices. So when you go to the grant module off the main menu and click on Generate Invoices, this uh, form will pop up. And what you're able to do is generate invoices in a variety of different ways. Uh, for today's example, we're just going to focus on one grant. However, you could run them all in unison. You can generate invoices all at once, um, and it'll queue them up for you. However, we're going to focus on just a grant. Notice also that you can generate invoices by funder, right? So maybe you have a funder that's uh, granting you uh, or giving you multiple grants, and you can uh, go ahead and invoice them by the funder instead of just the individual grants. So here I'm going to click on grant, and we're going to do a drop down and select that, that block grant that we've been coding transactions to. Okay, so at this point, I can fiddle around with my invoice date, my posting date. I'm going to keep it at, uh, in fact, let me make this 1031. Okay, I'm going to generate an invoice at the end of October. And I'm going to uh, click on preview here, which is going to go fetch all of the transactions that are currently in the system as unbilled. Okay, now you'll see here that I have a form that pops up. It shows me all the time that was entered into the system. Okay, and also I have an invoice here, that $1,500.50. So at this point, I can toggle off those items that I do not want to bill at this point. And maybe I want to leave off the time that was put in for 11-1 and leave all the other October time in there. And I'm going to, uh, for, for now, let's just leave off this invoice again because it's a, a November bill. So you can see here you'll have the different sections, employee expenses, purchasing transactions, even order entry transactions, and gen journal transactions if I want to bring journal entries in. For instance, maybe you're bringing payroll into your system uh, through an outside vendor and you want to mark that as billable. All right, and so instead of putting it in as time, right, you want to bring it in as just regular payroll and then mark it as billable that you can bill back to the uh, to the grantor. So let's go ahead and leave this as such, and we're going to click on Create Invoice. And as the system processes, uh, eventually it'll come up with a, a message here that tells us that the invoice was generated uh, successfully. And you can see here that it's invoice number uh, 00552. So let me go ahead and copy that number. And I'm going to click Cancel here. And now I'm going to go back out into my order entry area and bring up AR invoices. Okay, and I'm going to put a filter there. And it brings up the invoices that was just uh, generated, the invoice that was just generated. And by viewing that invoice, we'll be able to see the detail inside of it, which is all the time, basically, uh, that was multiplied by a price of $100. So for all that time that we booked to that community development block grant, for the California, uh, and this could be any funder you want it to be, right? So it would basically send the California endowment this uh, this uh, invoice, and it would be uh, for $7,200 uh, because it was all that time multiplied by 100, okay? And of course, within Sage Intact, you can create uh, the invoices that you want to send to the, uh, to the, to the grantor. Um, you'll have full control over what you want those invoices to look like uh, before you actually email or uh, mail them out. So I hope this was helpful in uh, making sense uh, about the differences between just conducting your grant activity, your grant tracking through just a grant dimension, and then bringing in the full grant module where you can, in addition to do your grant tracking, actually automate the process of creating your grantor invoices, your time and material reimbursable invoices. Okay, if you have any other questions, you can contact your customer account manager uh, and they'll be able to help you. Thank you.